Good evening. Welcome to the Sunderland Select Board meeting. This is month, excuse me, I take the back. This is Tuesday, October 10th, uh, 2017. <clears throat> and we're just going to slightly reshuffle um, one order of business here. We're going to move the, if, that, if that's right with uh, you guys, due to uh, one of our guests having uh, some time constraints. We just want to move up the um, approval of the special town meeting warrant, if that's all right, and just bump that up a little bit. Um, because we don't have any appointments actually before that, so. <clears throat> so I'm just going to dig out my special town meeting warrant. Oh, warrant stuff, itself. Which is way back by this large pile of paperwork. So if I could, Mr. Chair, to clarify, tonight we're talking about motions to include. Yes. And as I was not at the last meeting, uh, has the date been set and the warrant been opened? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So again, tonight would be motions to include. We're not going to get involved in the motions. I'm sorry. Our motion would be only to include, it looks like, articles, a, right. a total correct. of five articles. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Thank and you. we actually put it off because we wanted you to be here, but now, <laughs> and unfortunately, we're short one member tonight. I'm not sure why, but he's... I suspect work's involved. Probably stuck under some pipes yeah, or exactly some explosion right. of the steam line. Or so if he's so. keeping the genie in the bottle, as it's known in the trade. <laughs> That's right. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, so our first one, I guess we'll just kind of go through these in order, sure. um, is to see if the town will vote to A, raise an appropriate transfer from available funds and or borrow the sum of $295,683 and authorize the treasurer with the approval of order of selectmen to borrow the said sum under the provisions of General Law Chapter 44, Section 788C, General Laws Chapter 44B, and or any other enabling authority for the purpose of planning, designing, improving, renovating, and or equipping what is known as the Sunderland Riverfront Park approximately shown on the sketch plan of Riverfront Park in a file with the town clerk and located on portions of the town owned parcels of land on School Street. Said parcels, con should I just continue to read the yeah, whole thing? Right. Yeah, I was like, you know, <laughs> and I'm trying to because there's wordy. corrections in here right, from right. council yeah, and I'm yeah. trying to avoid and read like what's not. So but it um, sounds like it's a borrowing authorization yes. in support of the work by the Pathways Committee. Exactly, and I'm, okay. I'm suspecting that there are also some grants tied to the back end of that somehow. So, do you want to um, just give us a, yeah, a um, quick synopsis of that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think you've heard about the pathway stuff for a while now. This is a greatly diminished proposal from where we started. Yeah. It is essentially a pathway running from the School Street area around the current ball fields to the river, then overlook tied back into the bow launch area there. Uh, the 295,000 is a bit of a frightening number perhaps, but the, the uh, project would only go forward if we got a park grant and if the CPA, uh, correct, if the CPA voted to approve it, which also requires a town meeting vote. So there would be an opportunity after this vote still to basically deal with the funding and say A or nay. Uh, the, the issue that came up most recently was to do with access next to the Veterans Memorial. The, some of the Veterans Committee, well, or maybe all of it, was concerned about that, and that was an issue. But the committee, or members of the committee, met with members of the Veterans Committee, and they now provided a letter where they can support the pathway there going forward, and an emergency access there, or a limited access there, I forget, limited access there. And so that issue seems to be taken care of. Plus, there's going to be a little more thought to the Veterans Memorial and how it plays into the whole pathway stuff. So there's no work on ball fields uh, going on in those pathways in Overlook, and it seems like a very uh, chopped down proposal. Uh, the amount of the grant, the park grant, would be 68%, which leaves 32% of the 295 the town of town fund. Uh, however, there are already some CPA funds available that have been allocated to that is at 20,000, so yeah, 20. about 20,000 allocated, and so we're probably looking at 70,000 70, additional CPA funds that would be needed 
Okay. But again, no CPA funds, no commitment, no heart grant, no commitment. Right, so it's, it's essentially conditional yes. on a, a set number of conditions yes. to reach that. Right, and I'll just add, um, the, the reason we're doing this now is it's, it's a, a bureaucratic requirement that it has to be, this article has to be voted on before the end of this calendar year. Um, Got it. And that's why we couldn't wait till after we found out if we got the grant. And yep. so it's kind of a housekeeping. Sort of shows commitment, I think, I suspect mm -hmm. to a certain point from by the town. With, with the plan as it stands to. So it's actually, it'll be an authoriza authorization to borrow up to. Right, and that's your ceiling. Not necessarily meaning that we, we will. Right. There'll be a lot of contingencies. So the vote is integral to the park grant application. Correct. Yes. Absolutely. Got it. So no special town meeting vote, no borrowing authorization, don't even bother applying. Correct. I think it's important to put in context, if it could, Mr. Chair, mm, it wasn't, please. if it wasn't for the help of fine effort of folks in this room, we wouldn't even be eligible for a park grant. That's right. Yep. I would that agree. worked by uh, Nancy and her. Anyway, countless hours. And a lot of meetings on that. Yep. As well. Yeah. And, really and important. All of them. <laughs> the Pathways Committees. Yeah. <laughs> and I think too, this is what you know, we're here talking specifically about the pathways, but you also kind of have to step back and look at holistically what's also going on around town. Right. This is one component and a number of things, like with our North Main Street project that we're trying to tie all of that in. And so it's complete streets, wayfinding and exactly. branding. It's okay. just so many good things going on. Yeah, and I might just add, since you mentioned that, that this path, that, and the reason it costs what it does is that this is a universally accessible path that people with, can go on walkers and wheelchairs. Uh, um, people <clears throat> from the senior housing will have this wonderful exercise mm -hmm. circuit. They'll be able to go down with their walkers to the river. It's, it's, yeah, it's going nice. to create access for the whole spectrum of our population, <clears throat> all ages and all abilities. Yeah, it's important because this really is our town center as opposed to like what you would think of up and down Main Street in that sense. So because we're not blessed with like a common or and we're kind of bisected by the two main roads. So that's uh, that's good. So anyways, we hope the selectmen can support this 100%. Mm -hmm. if, I could, if I could plug in one more example, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Uh, it was a handful of years ago we actually authorized, had a borrowing authorization for culvert replacement, I believe on Hadley Road. And it was, was just going to mention yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And it was it was a pretty you know eye popping authorization, and then the reality of the work came in at less than a third of what the authorized. We simply went back at a future town meeting or a subsequent town meeting, and reauthorized the debt and took that off the schedule. So, yep. this sounds like a very similar mechanism. Exactly, and then in here in this case too, there's grant money Correct. that'll be in there, so that'll be good. I uh, move <clears throat> to include Article One as presented. Uh, Second. <laughs> Everybody turn around. I know. <laughs> uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Two to zero on it. Cherry. Okay. Yeah. Thanks again for all of our time with us for this. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you Thanks so much. Thank you. I don't know, do, do you want to stick around for the, you know, you've got the recommendation. Oh, for the con con? Or you you good to roll with that okay. as is? Um, I'm here to meet you, but is which article is that? Okay. Just checking if you want to, but otherwise, don't worry about it. Okay. No, and from our perspective, it's great to fill that vacancy. But Careful back there. <laughs> Boston to join up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. All right, thanks. Okay. So, our second article is. Well, this one I'll read because it's shorter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's less lines crossed I know, out. Right? Yeah, exactly. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate transfer from available funds, borrow, or otherwise provide a sum of money for the purpose of funding the conversion of existing streetlights to energy efficient and long lasting LEDs, including all incidental and related expenses, same to be spent under direction of the town administrator, or to take any vote or votes in relation to thereto. So this is basically to convert our current um, streetlights over to LEDs, and 
This is also tied to some grants, isn't it? It is, right? and it's a reimbursable grant, so we have to up upfront the project costs, and then we will be paid back. Part of it is a, a portion of it is a grant, and a portion of it is a utility incentive, and then okay. the other town portion uh, would be paid back through energy savings uh, in about two years, two to three years. So that's a pretty good um, return, a couple of years on that, especially given the life expectancy of of those units so so as we're as we're tonight if i could mr chair as we're tonight talking about motions to include uh, the details will be fleshed out as i recall this is a combination of uh, a little bit of green communities a little bit of grant work uh, sherry's done through the office and, and again so thankful for all that work uh, and again simple two-year i believe it's just north of two years payback mm -hmm. um, and the funding sources will be called out in the motion Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Motion to include Article 2. Uh, second. Aye. Aye. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. <laughs> we, we double eyed it. I know. We did that. <laughs> all right. So two to zero on that one, Sherry. Um, and and two, the, what was the percentage that we'd end up getting covered of the costs? Do we have just like a ballpark? Um, or maybe like the percentage that we'd end up paying in would be about like the total project's about twenty one thousand. Yeah. Uh, the grant is um, just over four thousand. The utility um, incentive is five thousand six twenty eight seventy five. So the town's um, share of that's about thirteen five. Okay. okay. <clears throat> and then we get like a two year payback on that. Right. And then after that, I mean, we're going to see it's all gravy at that point. You know, so really good savings on the electricity. So. I've converted all the bulbs in my house over to it LED. Just, you know, it makes time. a difference to it. Really it, does. it does, and it's a much better quality of light, too, than those CFLs they tried to foist on us. So, All right, that's good. Um, okay, so then we have Article 3, um, which is to see if the town will raise an appropriate transfer from available funds, borrow, or otherwise provide the sum of money to the telecom expense account to fund the PEG FCAT services or take away vote or votes, excuse me, or take any vote or votes there in relation thereto, whereof, and so forth. Um, so this is for our PEG access funding. On this right, um, and this is due to the municipal modernization and how we have to account for our funds now. We, um, it used to be a special revenue fund and we appropriated it up front, but now it has to also be in the budget. Um, so. We will be uh, moving that into the telecom line expense account, um, and the total amount is fifty thousand, of which we have twenty nine thousand that was appropriated at the annual. Um, so we'll be looking to transfer twenty one thousand from the PEG access into the into tele the telecom expense. Okay, and then going forward, we'll pick it up as part of the regular it, budget. After annually, that. yeah, it'll have to be budgeted. So there was. There's a question, Mr. Chair, if I could, mm. about the flow through from PEG access revenues coming from the license agreement to the town through toward FCAT. And the mechanism changed this year? Mm -hmm. Got it. So we're in a position now to have to allocate yeah, both really. on the revenue side, because that's been that's been on the revenue sheet for forever. Since there's been a license. It yeah, would pay exactly. straight from there, but now it has to be in in an expense and out. You should wonder if the accountants haven't worked on this. <laughs> I know, huh? Anyway. Accounting mechanics. Right, accounting mechanics, which is borders on quantum. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Sometimes I, I, do, I digress. Uh, a motion to include Article 3 as this is not going to raise and appropriate anything that isn't already in our revenue stream. Right. Exactly. Okay. Uh, second? All those in favor for inclusion? Aye. Aye. All right. Two to zero on that one, Sherry. All right. And the third one we have is to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer from available funds. Nope, I take that four. back. I skipped that one. All right, I mean, I did that one already. Number four. Yeah. <laughs> to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer from available funds, borrow or otherwise provide the sum of money to pay the final lease payments on the highway department holder tractor or take any vote or votes in relation thereto. So this is our last lease payment on the it holder. It is, and it's a housekeeping. I missed it um, at the annual. 
Um, okay. So that final payment amount is 27111 And the thought, we haven't discussed it yet, but with the financial management team or the board is to um, transfer that from stabilization and maybe put it back um, free cash once it's certified at the, at yeah. the annual okay. next year. So because this was a lease, if I could, Mr. Chair, mm. because this was a lease in prior years, we, we've done this before. We, we, we know what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had that on the rate, right? Mm -hmm. So the motion will include funding sources that should not affect, cannot affect the current rate. It being the last payment, this also drops off for next year. Right. So okay. it'll be Which a slight nice. reduction in the rate for, to cover that. Yeah, when, when all the accounting machinations are complete yeah. and the rec reconciliation is complete, we wouldn't have to raise it for next year. Right. Just Got drop it. our raise and appropriate by whatever the... Got it. Okay. Uh, move to <clears throat> include Article 4. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Two to zero on that one. We have one more. How come these are all raised and appropriate? And yeah, There's like no policy wonky stuff, <laughs> <laughs> which is almost or, or transfer from available funds, which I'm yes. assuming. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. I completely agree. A slight sprinkling of wonk That's in exactly there. Exactly right. <laughs> to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate transfer from available yeah. funds, borrow or otherwise provide a sum of money for costs associated with the design and engineering services for the implementation of Sunderland's complete streets project or take any action relative thereto. So this is for our costs on complete streets. Um, we did receive the <coughs> grant, as you know. Some of our projects um, will require some engineering. Yeah. So we started um, looking around and getting quotes for engineering. George has also um, contacted Eaton to look at some um, issues re regarding uh, landlines and stuff with a couple oh, okay. of the projects. Okay. Um, so we have estimates between ten and thirty thousand. We're anticipating probably about fifteen, um, but I'm hoping to um, get together with George and Dan Murphy, who's been helping us out with that project, um, okay. and have a better number for you for our meeting on the twenty third. Okay. Yeah, because I think that'll be good to get it. Yeah, then we more can firm see number. It's a, a right. lot of it's depending on what's um, going to happen with the um, land that's being surveyed and looked at. So. Yep. Okay. And then we can talk. I think at that at that point, once we have a better number of the overall costs and where they are relative to the grants and proceed. things like that. Yeah. Our our hope was to put the project out to bid this winter, um, so that we could be first in line for construction in that the spring and have um, all this done before the parade in June. Yes, um, that would be nice. So um, that's our hope and that's one of the reasons why you're seeing that article there. We mm -hmm. don't want to wait until the annual okay. um, because then we're going to miss another construction season. Yep. Uh, Under the grant, the work has to be done by the end of the fiscal year, so. Yep. And yes. you never know if there's delays. Right. right. Yeah. The mm. engineer requirements aren't tied to the grant. This is not like the TIP, right? Right. This is a matter of just having the engineering work complete so it can be executed. Yep, the yeah. documents and those type of things, so. That's a good point for differentiation right. between the, the two you know, projects. We, we have a commitment on North Main Street, which is a, a percentage of engineering before yeah, it's no. even eligible. Yeah, in this exactly. case here, this is like get things going. Right, because we've got, got yeah, we've got our grants approved and things like that. So it's like thank yep. you. All right. Uh, do we have a motion on that one. Uh, move to include Article Five as presented. Okay. Uh, second, and all those in favor? Aye. All right. Two to zero on that one, Sherry. So that covers our town warrant items. Unless there's any objections, I'll just hop back up to the yeah. top. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, next item is our minutes from 925. If I could, Mr. Chair, as I wasn't present and uh, Tom's not here, maybe the yeah, minutes could put him off. Exactly I think. Here. Yep. Yeah, at I, least I two would, of you. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I think we kind of need to do that. <laughs> just, yeah. <Okay. laughs> so we'll just stick those until next week. All right. Um, and then we have Board of Selectmen updates. Um, a lot of meetings I have. Uh, next week is basically, we don't have a select board meeting next week, but we've got a personnel committee meeting to kick off our what we want to accomplish for next year. And then we have our branding meeting on... 
Tuesday, I believe, Sherry, mm -hmm. right? Um, in which we're looking at, yeah, for lack of a better word, it's branding and marketing for the town. So, um, and it involves signage and a number of other things. We had a good presentation, I think, the last go around. Nice. And did we post any of that on the website at all? No, not yet. Okay, um, because I know, I'd like to get some of that info out to the 300th, some of the people in the 300th community, because one of the things they were looking at is um, banners, oh, where people smart. could, you know, you could essentially buy a banner. So yeah. if we could somehow tie that to, to get, you know, to hook those two things up, because they were kind of going down Mark's independent channels. Mark's presentation, the designer. Yeah, um, that would be kind of kind of nice, because, you know, we had a number of, like, potential banners in the, in the package and things like that. And, um, that was a way for people to donate, you know, some money to the cause too that they're looking at. So, um, so see what I can do. Yeah, I can tell you who afterwards. Okay. You know, if you need a, to point to a person. Um, so, other than more meetings, and then we're, uh, well, then actually we have a joint meeting on the 24th with the other towns, the finance committees, and the school committees. Um, so that will be, and that's all going to be over at Frontier, I think, right? Probably, I would guess. I'm trying to remember the location of that one. I'm not sure, but I'll yeah, double check. Media Center. Media Center. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, the, also known as the library at Frontier. So <laughs> we've actually hosted in the past, but yeah, we yeah. had. That's why I wasn't sure. Yeah, I'm trying to have it on our neutral ground versus their neutral ground. <laughs> <laughs> so that that should be an interesting um, mm. meeting. That'll be discussing, I believe, a um, a bond for a number of things. So. Um, That'll be coming up, yeah. Um, I think that's all I can think of at the moment. Last Thursday, if I could, Mr. Chair, we had mm -hmm. a, uh, a site visit with the folks from RDI, Franklin Regional Housing Authority, and the uh, folks from DHCD came out from Boston to a site visit at 120 North Main. It was about uh, two hours midday on Thursday, and um, it was interesting hearing some of the perspectives. So DHCD had some questions about the general feel for the site, like yep. so many things, if you look at it two-dimensionally instead of drawings, you know, does it, what, what, what is that in the larger context? Right, yeah. I believe uh, everyone left with a better feel for um, the project, whether okay. it be DHCD, uh, our architect, our developer, RDI, as well as uh, Franklin Regional Housing was there. I represented the town and um, it was interesting to kind of put that two-dimensional piece uh, of, of paper in the context of that open space yep, and, then and, see it. and see what that looked like. There were some concerns expressed by DHCD. They were very clear about the current round of applications that uh, RDI is applying for. Those are like every other round, you know, there's pressure on them, <coughs> distribution yeah. of funds, availability of funds, bond authorizations, it, it scales up. It was also nice to have some FaceTime with uh, folks at DHCD who, um, if anyone knows, uh, you know, certainly the town's history with DHCD has not always been pleasant. Um, we we um, uh, played nice, as was described, and walked out shaking <laughs> hands. So uh, good exchange, and I think it was beneficial for the project uh, in general. Uh, and to have everybody together together yep. at the same spot at the same time yeah that's, you know, that's was, very good it was like let's take a look at this and so it was very very good okay. um, anyway that was last thursday hmm. hopefully that'll keep things humming along well it's yeah, a it's interesting to, interesting set of timelines with respect to that uh rdi uh the scale came up in the area of questioning the amount of parking in the total paved area pervious services came up you that, know what are yeah. the setbacks you know that they have very very this is what they do uh as an agency they had some very um on the grant side they had some very pointed uh questions and we were um we were fortunate to have uh both our uh, development agent uh, Laura, as well as our architects rep there, to so simply go answer the question. Answer the question. Boom, yep, boom, that's great. Boom. Let's be flexible. Let's talk about these things. So that was very good. That alone probably saved a, a large amount of time and going paperwork. back and forth in emails yeah. and paper. Yeah, yeah exactly. so that's good. Uh, Sherry, 
I'll just yeah. say one more. We just yeah. we just left exit the capital planning meeting committee tonight. That's and, right. Uh, the discussion was in and around fire apparatus as well as timing. We also have, as this warrant motions include a fair amount of capital work, uh, scheduled the subsequent meeting for next Tuesday to review this uh, uh, special town meeting warrant for recommendations. And that's it. Thanks. Yeah. Um, Sherry, town administrator updates. Um, okay. Um, a couple of things. Uh, we're getting ready to launch the first Sunderland Community Newsletter. There you go. Yeah. Um, so this first one will feature just kind of how to find things in town, where mm -hmm. things are located. It's uh, going to be electronic, so there'll be links to click on so they can find more information about various, the open house at the fire department, and uh, the 300th, all, all those things that are going on right now. Our next newsletter, um, it's going to be quarterly, will feature, it'll be more content yeah. sensitive, more future articles and um, spotlights on different um, groups and things that are going on. So we're re excited about it. Um, Phyllis Berman and Larry, her husband, Reve, I believe it mm -hmm. is, and Cindy have been um, working really hard on pulling nice. all that together. Oh, that's great. Um, and they did a great job, so we're excited <laughs> to launch that this week. I don't know if you've had a chance to... I, I did uh, look at it. flip through it, yeah. Good. It's good. So um, we'll probably send that out by the end of the week. Sure. Uh, we're going to send it through the school listserv okay. and through the code red. And we'll also have a sign up on the town website for anybody else who might want to receive it. Mm. And we'll print copies if, like if someone, if you know, needs one. So. Okay. Well, that's great. Um, the other thing that I have is um, I'd like to make a recommendation for the award for the um, archives for the town records to King Information Systems. Mm -hmm. As you recall, um, we received CPC funds at the annual town meeting for that project. Mm -hmm. um, we did look on the state um, contract website for vendors and tried to get some bids. There's not a lot of... Um, groups that are doing that right now. They do a yeah. piece of it, but not all of it. Like Iron Mountain will do storage, but they you know, will organize and go through the records. So um, we feel that the bid that King Information submitted is the best one. It's the only one. And we'd like to move forward with the project. And so if the board makes the award tonight, uh, they will begin the project on January 2nd. And it's estimated to take <clears throat> about three weeks. I think this is the first go round too, so people mm -hmm. are probably still trying to figure things out in terms of, like from a business standpoint, sure. doing that, so, yeah, okay. Um, I make a motion to accept the recommendation of the procurement officer to work with King Information on this uh, records. We've been talking about this for a decade. Yeah, yep, it's been a while. And it, it'll be good to help get things organized, and, right. and especially if we need to go back and do research. I think there'll be a lot of other benefits that maybe we'll see as we start doing it. It will help so. a lot fulfilling sure. public records requests and those things, too. So Right, especially the older things that, you know, you just can't hop online and look at, So which is great. Um, second. Good for a bit of discussion, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. If, if, if um, not to sound like the resident historian tonight, but... You know, this piece of work right here through uh, town clerk's efforts, through a series of town meetings, and then prior to the adoption of the CPA here in town was an active and ongoing discussion. And it's been, you know, we think about CPA right now as being, um, I would say, in its, in, in, its, uh, in its infancy here in the town of Sunderland, but that took years to get in place. Uh, and we continue to see some of those benefits. So for those who worked on that CPA initiative uh, and for those voters who supported it, there is another benefit. It's true. Absolutely. They just keep rolling in little by little. Right. <clears throat> anyway, thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Two to zero on that one, Cherry. And the other thing that I had, I'm was hoping that we could maybe uh, move forward with the second round of community compact best practices. Uh, the two that I have in mind and I'd like to recommend is the um, under financial management, the development of a long range planning forecasting model. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, and then the second one is under public accessibility best practice. 
and that would be to undertake an Americans with Disabilities Act ADA self-evaluation and develop a transition plan to comply with federal civil rights laws that require public buildings to be accessible to persons with disabilities. So what these um, two projects, if we move forward, would get us is the technical assistance, similar to the last two projects where we worked with um, the FERCOG and Joe Markarian on our capital plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great tool. And the Complete Streets um, project as well. Um, so for the um, ADA project, once we have the self-evaluation and the transition plan, it's similar to the prioritization plan, the self-evaluation, we evaluate all of our um, programs, our buildings, our public lands to see where we might be deficient. Um, we identify those and then we make a plan, a transition plan of Resolve. how we're going to um, bring them up mm -hmm. uh, to the to the code, and it will also give us um, an idea of what those costs might be. Yeah. And then we can apply for funding. Um, there are a couple of pro uh, programs that we would be eligible for funding once we have those plans in place. Um, I think that that project fits really good with other projects that are going on in town. Yeah. Um, complete streets where we're trying to make things uh, more accessible for people. Right. Um, it also fits really good with the um, capital planning project that we have going on right now. We just issued an RFP uh, for our municipal buildings assessment. Yep. So part of that could identify you know, where we're deficient um, with um, ADA requirements for our buildings. Um, and again, um, there's potential grant funding that would help us to address those deficiencies. Um, so I feel like there are two really good ones. The um, long-range planning and forecasting model will give us um, a look at short-term and long-term financial obligations and implications and um, help us plan for the future of the town. I think any, any additional tools that help us plan financially are probably worth looking at, mm -hmm. which is good. Uh, date sensitive, Sherry? Um, well, the longer the we, we wait, the further back in the queue sure. we are to get the technical assistance sure. that we need to keep moving forward. Um, they're rolling, so we mm -hmm. can apply at any time. Okay. Um, so if you'd like more time to, to ponder and look at some of the other programs that are available, um, that's fine too. Yeah, if I could, if I could, Mr. Chair, make a, I would, I would, I would personally prefer to wait and see some of the, the transcript around that. Yep. Only in that we can, we can make it, we can make them, we can move on it quickly. Uh, just that right right now the the details are such that I'm, hesi more. I'm hesitant to vote. Yeah, a little a little, a little more fleshing out, right? And then yeah. you're right. Then we can just kind of pounce on. And again, it and move next ahead. week's next meeting's agenda, no brainer. Yep, have it in the package. We can ready to re okay. yeah, take action good. on it. I would agree. Yep. So next meeting, please. Okay. And just for reference, that will be on the 23rd of October. Had a busy week that week. Yes, <laughs> it's a busy month. Yeah, We're just looking at the whole it's thing right out of the street. Right through. <laughs> yep. It's like, ah, you had summer. Well, guess what? <laughs> Back in, and then before you know it, we'll blink our eyes and we'll be rolling yeah, into that right, favorite right, time right, of the right, year, budget right. season. So always right after, right after <clears throat> taxes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, next up on our agenda. Uh, we have the Conservation Commission recommending an appointment of Mark Zynan to an opening on the commission. I move the recommendation and, and uh, thank uh, thank Mark for his interest in participating at that. Uh, what, what it seems having you, you have your tenure on, on Conservation yeah, yeah, Commission. Yeah, nine years I yeah, think on that. And, yeah, uh, it's it's a very very long range as well as kind of. Uh, front line of interpretation. So that, that's a very complex board, and I appreciate Mark's interest yep. in that. Yep. And I, all I can say is thank you very much, Mark, and yep. make sure you've got some good boots. Because <laughs> <That's right. Good laughs> there's a lot of tromping through fields and and uh, looking at drainage ditches and mm -hmm. all sorts of fun stuff. But and it's also one of the one of the committees that y you're really charged with enforcing essentially the regulations. Right. So you're, you're you're sticking largely to data yep. 
and and reacting on that data. So it's kind of it's kind of a nice mechanical Good thing point. too. So Good point. Um, move his appointment. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And this will be an appointment until the next appointment schedule and or election. Yes. Got it. Thank you. And our next item is the Veterans Memorial Committee regarding the Riverside Park project. Is and this, if I could ask this? Sherry, is this acceptance of a correspondence uh, as we talk about this going forward? Yes. Okay. And the issue here was around access uh, to the park, what they're calling the, well, the, the back Veterans of our building, park, the unnamed right. park, and then its impact on the Veterans Memorial. Exactly. And then we kind of touched on that a little earlier in the, um, the discussion. Right. That, yeah. They did meet, um, was it last week or the week before, yeah, with this, um, the second of October? Berkshire yeah. Design and um, Gary Briere from mm -hmm. CAP, uh, the <coughs> Community Pathways and Sarah were here yep. um, to review the design and um, answer any questions that they had. And um, at that time, um, they were in favor of the project as um, it's shown on the plan here. Mm -hmm. And they submitted this letter um, to the board to let them know, to let you know that they've uh, reviewed the project and are removing their objections. And this is in keeping with the special town meeting yes. warrant article about the borrowing authorization. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And it helps to keep, <clears throat> I think, because initially that was sort of essentially like a two way traffic lane in, that, in the original it's just design. A path. Yeah. Right. yeah and, and this allows access to it when needed, but it keeps some of the, um, I guess, some of the solitude. You know, in that sense. I mean, I, I understand there's traffic right in front, but that's set up a little differently in that it's a main road. So, um, and you'll still have access to that new parking from the other side. You'll just be, we'll just be following it there. And then when we have a special event, it allows us to move things in and out, which is nice. So, um, and I also remember, I recall seeing some stuff about um, getting our trees in the memorial prune too, mm -hmm. um, which is, is, I think is especially important while these, um, elms are young because they yeah, they can tend to break a little bit up up till the once they get older and then, mm -hmm. then they kind of settle in but they're a little more vulnerable when they're younger <clears throat> and then we'll finally get to see is that canopy interleaves and grows in I think that it's kind of nice because you sort of see an evolution of that space because it's really wide open and then as it, the trees mature it'll be a it'll take on a dis different character yeah, so, so it'll be nice so all right. We have one more in the relation to housing tonight, the Franklin Regional Housing Authority. They are looking to establish a um, citizen participation or advisory group to provide oversight um, on the town's um, CDBG grants. Um, this is for the towns of Leverett, Conway, Deerfield, and Sunderland. So they'd like a representative from each community Do they want them from a specific committee or anything, or? No. Um, or is it an at-large? One member of each of the participating towns, at least one member of the committee will be low, moderate income. This committee will provide independent oversight of the program performance during the grant term. Their mission will be to ensure that all proposed activities would be accomplished, will accomplish the goals uh, stated in the town's community development strategies. Okay. I'd move that we, we uh, post this for community interest. I was just going to say, right, put it on the website and get, get it out there. Get it out there. Yeah. See what kind of see what uh, uh, people are interested in, and they can contact our office. Again, you're talking about community development block grants across four communities. This is a great way to understand the impacts of what those block grants do, and frankly, work with people in other communities. Yeah, exactly. Because it's not we don't do it in a vacuum. So. Right. I think that's that's a, a good thing. If we can just maybe come up with a easier to understand description yeah. of what it is and what they what, what they'll be doing, that would be great. Good point. Yeah, and then then if we have to, we can always appoint somebody if 
Right, you take one off. Draft a, a volunteer if, if <laughs> need be. So, Sherry, is there, they're only looking for, for the final quarter of the calendar year. Okay. Should happen prior to the end of the final quarter of the calendar year. So we have okay. we have a couple of weeks to search names out before we have to name anybody. Yeah, we'll post it tomorrow and okay. see what we get. Great. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks. Right. <clears throat> Next up is our hazard mitigation plan. I see the cog has rebranded. How nice of them. Yeah. They're serving us better. <laughs> Uh, now is this um, because our plan is still in, in effect right yeah for it's needing updating years. every yeah. so let's see Sunderland um, the plan was adopted in June 14. of 2014 and expires in 2019 yeah, so we better so, get on it yeah. uh, they're offering assistance of a planning grant from MEMA to assist us with updating our plan. If the town would so like to participate, um, we can cash or um, uh, cash or in-kind services, or we can um, use DLTA funds. Okay. Or technical assistance mm -hmm. um, yeah. is eligible as well if we would like to participate. I, I, no, go ahead. I was gonna say the hazard mitigation plan as it's established you know, like so many things, it has to be updated. And mm -hmm. it's, it's awfully important if the COG, this is kind of in their wheelhouse. If they're suggesting that there's 25% match, we're talking the, say, $3,300 range as a cap. Um, whether it's an appropriation we have in the budget currently, we have it through grant. We have a grant, we have a grant line in our budget. Yep. Yeah, with grant writing and that. consulting. Grant writing and consulting, correct. Uh, I, I would I would suggest that uh, one other agency to contact on this would be uh, inside the town of Sunderland would be the a note to the Conservation Commission, and then a note to the Emergency Planning yeah, or right, administrator Seth, Seth yep, group. Saying, exactly. You know, talk to our emergency uh, coordinator and say, you know, does the plan make sense to update? I'm sure it does. Yep. You know. You know, like a lot of the regulations and things that you put in, you can't just put it in and walk away. Yeah, You've got exactly. To, and anybody who's paid any attention to the news for two minutes over the last, you know, whatever is going to, you can see all of the disasters that are occurring out there. We've been lucky because our last our tropical storm, Irene, was really our last mm -hmm. um, item. But you know, it's we got off easy this year, but I think we really need to make sure we have that in place and ready to roll if we ever need it. So this is time sensitive. Their grant application to MEMA is due on the 16th, okay. if we would like to Of participate. October? Yeah. Good, good thing they yeah. sent it to us today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Now, that, that's a grim efficiency. Yeah. Uh, move, move to, move to uh, accept the recommendation. Uh, second. Update the hazard mitigation hazard mitigation plan and notify SEPT and CONCOM that we're moving forward with this. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll, uh, I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Keep our hazard mitigation plan up to date and hope we never have to use it. <laughs> well, yeah. But at least it'll be up to date and we'll... Right. And we have had some experience with disasters around here recently, so over the last 10 years or so. It's also important, if I could, Mr. Chair, these, these plans, whether they're housing plan, whether they're the park grant we were talking about with earlier with uh, Sarah, Nancy, and Rock, who I, I totally blanked the names out, forgive me for that. You know, those efforts of, of uh, establishing those participations in this organization keep the threat of our government running and I don't mean government like big G you know angry tweets I mean like what uh, happens if the river rises exactly <laughs> that's different yep that's very different and I, and I remember during Irene I was actually down at the boat launch and I had footage of the water mm -hmm. just slowly mm -hmm. you can actually see it coming right up the boat ramp mm -hmm. and so. you know statistically we're our number is going to be up soon right so it's, it's important to do that and and all this ties in too. I think we're going to be seeing a lot of improvements in the community over the next. You have to kind of look out a little bit, maybe say five plus years or so. Mm -hmm. But a lot of this stuff will come to fruition over that time between North Main Street and things like that. And 
you know it it takes a while to plan these things out to get them moving and everything and to to include everybody's input but you know things do get done and maybe not as fast as you'd like sometimes but you know that's a great point that's okay <clears throat> all right and then our last item <clears throat> change hats as we slide down the sewer system of Sunderland here we are uh, looking at our approving our FY18 sewer rate setting information uh, so we have an FY18 wastewater treatment budget approved at annual town meeting of $307,116. And we have a note here about electric that was moved to the energy line of $32,000. Right. And then a total of debt, principal, and interest of 30278 which adds up to $369,394. And this is probably one of the least complex things in the middle of our stuff. We just take that total cost, essentially, and divide it by the number of sewer units, mm -hmm. which is 1264 and you get a sum total of $292.25 per unit. And that's an increase of five dollars and forty-one cents. So our new uh, over the older rate of two hundred and eighty-six dollars and eighty-four cents. Given moved. inflation and everything, I think that's yeah. a pretty reasonable yeah. rate. Anybody who's well, anyway, we, we've we've talked in years past about Title Five versus yes. sewer rates, and and then anybody who's lived in the MWR area, yeah, service right, area, who's exactly. come out here would. Right. Jaw dropping. Oh, they'd like <laughs> dance around. <laughs> as, yes. I just saved five grand. Yeah, exactly. Eight hundred dollars yeah. per mm -hmm. unit where I live. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Is it really okay? Yeah. So, so you must be looking at that two hundred ninety-two, and you're like, hmm, that's pretty nice. But yeah. if we drop the point two five and made a nice round number, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Well, um, we've actually <laughs> run into issues about it being too low, and right. it's actually right. penalized us. In exactly right. Things. Uh, move to adopt the sewer rate for the, this year of $292.25 per user uh, as presented. Uh, I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two to zero on that. Sure. And also, can we get hats next time that we can we have to have sewer hats? That's exactly right. right. Sewer hats. <laughs> but you the, wait till we can start sending our, our sludge back to Montague once they start rocking their plant again. Yeah, I know. That'll be, that'll be nice. Mm -hmm. The Ralph Cramden hat. In exactly. Or not Ralph. Uh, I can't think of his name right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. Norton. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Art Carney. All right. Um, and just a little FYI, our next meeting is the 23rd, and then we have a joint meeting on the 24th with the Frontier Member Town Selects Board and FinCom, and then we have a special town meeting on the 30th of the month. And I also have a hunch that there is a quote coming up this evening. Maybe. <laughs> I missed that for a while. So. If I could, Mr. Chair, it, it uh, seems, as they all do, it always seem uh, poignant. So this is again from uh, Washington, a biography by Ron Chernow. And uh, late in his, late in his uh, political terms, uh, Mr. Washington, Quote, Washington and other founders entertained the fanciful hope that America would be spared the bane of political parties, which they called factions, and associated with parochial self-interest. Unquote. I think that says it all. I like the first two yep. words, fanciful hope. Yes. Right? <laughs> well, we still have hope anyway. We have hope. We do. Thank you. That was a, a, a choice little one. And if anybody's interested, our founding fathers had very heated debates about such things as we political have. parties and some of the other things that are, I see coming up, like estate taxes and things like that, mm -hmm. and trying to create landed gentry in this country as they pitched off the yoke of a feudal system. So, Tortured Adams as a, as a Tory. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> what? <laughs> anyway, what are you talking sorry. About? I digress. Um, do you have a motion? To uh, motion to adjourn. All right. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And we're called out at uh, 738.